This is Reverend Dwayne Anderson, the pastor here at Grace Community Church in Lorain, Ohio. We're here at Grace Community Church. We ask you to do one simple thing, and that is grow with grace. Grow with us as we grow with you, as we grow together in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning's message comes from the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And it reads as such, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you, have may, you may have had to suffer in grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your face, the salvation of your souls. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for yet another day, another day that wasn't promised, another day that we have no hand in. Father, you saw fit to rise us this morning with, with purpose, with your provision and your protection. So we ask, Father, that you walk with us today. You walk with us, you hold our hands, and, and you carry some of us who who may find the weight of life and living to be a little bit heavy. Now we ask that you open, your, open our minds and open our hearts to your will and your way. Let us absorb this message, Father. Let us be encouraged to continue to do your will. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and all of those out there listening, say amen with me. Amen and amen. This morning's message is titled, Why the Faithful Suffer. Why the Faithful Suffer. That's a great question. That is a great question. Over the last couple of months, I would say, I've done more funerals than I have done in a very long time. And one of the questions that comes out of the planning and just conversating with the families um, is why. Why this person who may have been really faithful, God-fearing, did all the right things, encouraged people, and, 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 and tried to win souls to Jesus Christ. Why do those people suffer more than some other folks who we have in our minds deserve suffering? Why those few that, um, that are believers in Christ do the right things? They don't chew with their mouth open. They don't color outside of the lines. Why they seem to suffer more at the hands of this world than those who have hearts filled with contempt, corruption, and hurt, harm, and danger on, on their menu. That's a great question. And I'm here to tell you that at the end of it all, the faithful will be rewarded. There is victory in your faith. Now, as we look at this scripture some 2,500 years ago in the book of Ecclesiastes, um, Solomon, Solomon measured the course of human existence and concluded that life is all vanity or empty. He saw that the righteous suffer and felt that it was a form of injustice. Job must have felt that when he went through his spiritual trial, when he was tried by the devil. Perhaps you too have gone through an extended trial and had questions and doubts about it. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? I didn't wake up this morning. I didn't sign up for this. So why do the good have to suffer? Why do good guys finish last? Why? Why? And as 
that's a very valid question. Why? Now, let me stop and say that everything isn't gloom and doom. In fact, we as believers have it pretty good. Peter gives us several reasons for rejoicing. In verse 3, he says, we have a living hope. How many of you need some hope today? Verse 4, we have a a lasting inheritance. Verse 5, we have long-term salvation. Verse 6, we have a longed-for final reward, victory over life on this side of living. With all of this in mind, let me say that not all is bad. In fact, there is much cause for rejoicing in the Lord today. Regardless of what we see on the other side of our doors, regardless of what we see on CNN and on Fox News and on MSNBC, regardless of what's going on overseas in Europe, regardless of what's going on in the hospitals, we got it good. We've got it good being, having our name in the the book of life. We have it good knowing that who our father is waiting on us. We have it good. In fact, there's much cause for rejoicing in the Lord today. And we ought to get about the business of doing just that, rejoicing in what we have. And I hate this phrase, but it's it's very appropriate. It could be worse. Things could be much worse than what they are right now. Even, even if you are in your Valley of Baca moment, even if you are going through a dark and troubling time, even if your health is playing tricks on you right now, even if your money is acting funny, it could be worse. It could be much worse. There will be trials that come our way. Amen. Amen. Preacher used to tell me all the time that if you're not in the midst of a trial, you're either just coming out of one or you're about to go into one. So get ready. We may not understand them nor appreciate them uh, when they come, but we need to be prepared for them just the same. We need to stay prayed up. Yeah. Been talking about faithfulness and praying over the last couple of weeks. We need to stay prayed up putting on the full armor of God. That's Peter's purpose in these verses. He wants to encourage us, but he also wants to prepare us for what is going to come. The storm is coming, but rejoice in the storm. Today, let's see what Peter's words can teach us about our trials and why, why the faithful suffer. He gives us three words that we need to keep in mind about our trying times. Three words. The first word comes in verse 6. He gives us a word about the reality. About reality. Rejoicing is our common state. Can we agree there? Rejoicing. We want to have fun. We want to rejoice. We want to celebrate victories. Amen. They feel good. Hard times don't, but we want to rejoice in the good times. If you spend enough time around some believers, you you may come away feeling like Christian life is one big series of trials and that there's no room for praise. In truth, as we see in Luke 20 and 10, in truth, we are to be a rejoicing people. We are to rejoice despite our troubles. Despite our troubles, we are to have a song of praise in our mouth. And we have to wrap our minds around the fact that just because we're saved, just because we have been redeemed, it does not guarantee us immunity from trials. The word of God says, does not say, well, it does not say that you are going to go through the rest of life from salvation, from your redemption day, it does not say that you're going to go through life without trials. The Christian who thinks that just because he or she is saved, that they're going to be shielded from trouble, is in for a terrible, rude awakening. Being saved is no hedge from trouble. Christians get sick 
Christian marriages fall apart. Christian parents have trouble with their children. Christians have financial troubles. Christians walk through some pretty deep, dark valleys. Jesus said it as plain as he could have said it in John 16 and 33. Here's what he said. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. How many of you need some peace? You might have peace, and in the world you shall have tribulation. But he also goes on to say this. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he has overcome the world and we're following him, we are going to overcome the world when we follow him. Now, we can follow some foolishness down the rabbit hole and we are not gonna, we're not going to be victorious in anything. We're going to be victorious in that rabbit hole. Amen. But if we have our, our eyes on him, if we follow him, we will be victorious over this world and whatever it has in it. We will be victorious. Amen. Rough times are in store. Rough times are in store for everyone. Remember that just because this, this trial came and took you by surprise and, and jerked the rug out from under your feet, it never took God by surprise. He knew it was coming. He knew about it before it happened and had already made a way to bring you out of that trial. He didn't bring you to the trial to leave you in the trial. He brought you to the trial to teach you some things and to bring you out of the trial. He never changes and is still able to bring you through. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And if he has conquered the world and he has brought you to your troubles, don't you think he loves you enough to bring you out of your troubles? Better than the way you went into them. So we've got to learn to place our hand in the master's hand and allow him to guide us through, help us navigate the traps and snares. Let him be our GPS so we can navigate some of those dark times. But the second word comes from verse 7. The second word comes from verse 7, and it's a word about realignment. It's a word about realignment, kind of recalibrating yourselves. There are areas of our trials, the trial of your faith. Now, when when troubles do come, They seem to concentrate their power against your faith in the Lord. Yeah. The devil ain't worried about your faith in your family. He's not worried about your faith in your job. The devil's not worried about your faith in your money. He knows that if he can get you distracted off base, If he could steal your concentration on the Lord, so you're out there focusing on some other things, everything else is a done deal. Everything else is a done deal. Nothing else will prosper. There will be no success and victory in anything else if he can take your mind off the Lord, if he can damage your faith. Amen. Satan wants to do all he can to make Christians doubt the power of God to meet their needs. That's why pocketbooks dry up, because we think that our jobs are are the all that ends all. We think our increase comes from that job. But our increase comes from the Lord through that job. And if we leave the Lord out of the plan, amen, then what we get from the job will dry up. We've got to keep our focus on the Lord. We've got to keep our focus on the way maker. Amen. If anyone knew this, if anyone knew this, it was Peter. 
Jesus had already told him that he was going to die for Christ. Jesus had already told Peter to expect rejection from the world. Peter had already suffered for his faith. Paul knew his share of suffering. Stephen suffered for Jesus. James was killed for his faith. Over 68 million believers have died during the last 2,000 years for the name of Jesus. That's 68 million, I'm sorry. Christians who find themselves suffering, especially for the faith, are in very good company. In that recalibration, that realignment, now we have that alignment taking place. When you kind of recalibrate and understand who your focus should be, that alignment takes place. Peter speaks of the refining process that gold goes through in this scripture. When it's supposed to be the flame, the impurities and the dross, that stuff on the top, the dross in the gold come to the top. The result is far purer gold than which was presented before. Amen, somebody. We need to go through the fire so he can purify us, so we can get rid of some of all that, that negative stuff, some of that nasty stuff. We need to be purified. There's purpose in the fire. Amen. There's purpose in your pain. The same is true about the life of the believer when Jesus allows us to go through the furnace of affliction. It serves to remove from our lives the things that were not needed, those things that were holding us back. We got to go through the fire to get rid of some baggage. It needs to br it brings us closer and pure relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the fire. Rejoice in the fire. But through it all, there's abundance that we receive. Peter nudges us to remember that we aren't home yet. Even though we may have some victories along the way, we are not home yet. Our trials are working for our good. Yeah, Romans 8 and 28, familiar, yes. We may not see the benefit today. But when we stand before the Lord in heaven, we are rewarded for our walk with him and for the sufferings we have endured. It will be worth it then. We may not understand it today. We may not understand why we go through the things that we go through. But in the end, by and by, yeah, we'll understand it better. We'll understand why we went through those trials and tribulations. We will understand why we went through the furnace. We will understand some things better by and by. But lastly, in verse 8, we see there's a word about reliability. And I like that word. Reliability says some things to me. Reliability says accountability. Reliability says integrity. Reliability says that somebody's got my back. Somebody's got my back. Not that God can count on us, but we can always count on him. As we weather the storms of life and, and we see God come through time and time and time again, we can learn to develop a spirit of praise as we journey towards heaven through some of our trials and tribulations. We can rejoice when we step into that furnace. We can rejoice when we walk into that lion's den. We can rejoice when we go through the doors of our jobs. We can rejoice when we step outside of our homes into this world that, that could care less about the Christian man, woman, and child. We should be able to rejoice wherever we are. We will find that our unseen Savior will see us through everyday trials. 
Just like the shepherd in Psalms 23, he ever abides with his own. When we face trials, he goes through them with us. Amen. He will never leave us nor forsake us. His grace is always sufficient for every need that we may have. This ought to cause us to be filled with that, that thing called unspeakable joy. Yeah. I don't know why the Lord keeps bringing me to preach sermons dealing with weathering storms. I don't know why. I don't know why he keeps bringing me to sermons that deal with faith. Sermons that deal with love. Sermons that deal with prayer. I don't know why he keeps bringing them to me. But I'm here to tell you. Don't let anyone steal your joy. Don't let anyone or anything cause you not to love. But don't let anything or anyone have you questioning your faith. Your faith needs to be solid. Unwavering, unmovable. Because your God is solid, unwavering, and unmovable. If you have found yourself in a place today where you're wavering with your faith, if you have found yourself outside of that loving and intimate and covenant relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, don't wait. Don't wait any longer. Get your mind right on Jesus. And watch things just happen for you. Watch them happen. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for the backslider. I want to pray for the one who is distracted. I want to play, pray for the one who is lost, wandering, and weary. But those faithful Christians, I want to pray for you, too, that, he, that his word continues to encourage you. Give you the energy and the, and the strength to get up and keep going. Father, we thank you. And we bless you once again for yet another awesome opportunity to simply live. Father, we want to turn some things around. We want to get some things right. So we ask, Father, that in your strength and in your power, that you remove the distractions, those things that are designed to steal our faith in you. Father, be with us. Walk with us. Hold our hands every step of the way carry us through whatever we may be going through or whatever we may face down the road. We may not understand it, Father. But all we need to know is that you've got our back, that you haven't left us. And because you are a conqueror of the world, we can be conquerors too. We love you and we bless you for the victories that lie ahead. We thank you for being the type of father that we want to claim. We love you and we bless you for all that you're in the midst of doing, even in this place today. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Listen. <clears throat> thank you all for hanging out with me this morning. Thank you all for hanging out with me this morning. Um, there will be no Bible study this coming Wednesday. We will not have Bible study this coming Wednesday. So take a break um, and we will be back in the swing, full swing of things the following Wednesday. I will be traveling to the state of Virginia as we bury my aunt next week. Uh, my aunt, um, Sharon George, she has won her victory and she is in the presence of her father and her savior. Amen. So we will be traveling 
um, next week to Virginia to bury my aunt. Um, continue to pray for each other. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for traveling mercies. Um, continue to pray for each other. Pray for our communities. Pray for our world because uh, we're on the brink of, of something pretty, pretty nasty. It's already started overseas, but, you know, we pray that God just keeps us, keeps all of us, whether we're here locally or we're internationally, keep us all, keep us all safe so that this thing does not get out of hand. If you have, have it in your heart to give to this wonderful, this wonderful fellowship of believers here at Grace Community Church, you could do so by sending your tithe, your offering, or your love offering to 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorain, Ohio, 44052. That's Grace Community, 1908 West 20th in the city of Lorain, Ohio, 44052. Or you can log on to our website at Grace Community Church. You'll see the little white church there, and there's a offering, a giving tab, the fourth tab on the top. There's a giving tab. You can click on that giving tab, and it'll walk you through the giving process to Grace Community Church, or you could log into our Givelify app. Uh, we have a Givelify app where you can give to the church in that manner also. Listen, we will be back in action. Uh, give us about a month. We will be back in person. The COVID numbers are going down, so I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. God bless you all. I love you all, and I hope to see you soon. Take care. <laughs>